How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks so much for having me today. This is an honor. We are super excited to have you. And for anyone that doesn't know about Rethink Fit, we're going to dive into the initiative, where it came from, what body proud means. is talking about. So rethink fit in my understanding, and then we'll get to sort of all of yours understanding as well, is the idea of reimagining what that word fitness can mean. So it's not only the external appearance, right, which we so often are taught that is what fitness does mean. But more than that, it is an internal experience of a full body, mind, spirit, emotional, there's financial fitness. So it extends well beyond this sort of physical element. Um, so Jeff and Mindy, because this is your baby, talk to me a little bit about sort of what Rethink Fit is as an initiative. And then we can dive into a bit about where it came from and the evolution of it. Sure. Uh, you want to take this? Okay. So, you know, as, as an initiative, it's really uh, along the lines of what you were saying. Uh, mind to heart, head to toe, inside and out. Uh, that's the message. And I think it's such a timely message because people, I believe, are looking for something that they can uh, expand their journey of transformation and how they feel. And to realize that just being healthy and fit encompasses everything. matter where they were to reshape their body and gain confidence and love who they are. However, we were working from the outside in. So it was like appearance first, but it created a different type of like idealized body image that they had to always be cut and lean and toned. But food and just eating a meal could change how, you're, how much water you're holding. So it changes your appearance. And it was causing, um, shifts in people's happiness it wasn't necessarily always confidence boosting it also became ego deflating so then the initiative came about because we're like well something isn't right because people are putting so much love and focus and time and dedication on themselves and their body and they're not getting the results that they want what's the next step so then we came up with the concept to be body proud to be proud of the actions and the new actions that you're taking for yourself and your body and from there, we launched into the initiative because you have to rethink. It starts from, um, it starts from the thoughts in your head and about what you think about yourself, about how, and that changes how you speak to other people, and it changes what activities you do. And so, the Rethink Fit initiative is really designed to help people challenge themselves or step beyond their comfort zone to do something that they might not have done, but now will do because it's part of an incentivized challenge. I think this is really cool because 
simply put, you were essentially hosting these events, right? And people were getting up on the stage. They were having a reason, let's say, to, you know, watch what they were putting in their bodies, like get moving, um, work towards goals and have gains and show others these transformations that they were achieving. And on stage, they would sort of put themselves on display, present themselves, we'll say, right? Um, to then compete for various prizes in addition, obviously to, you know, the feeling that they got just from achieving something um, and working towards something. Similarly, right, Rethink Fit has gotten so expansive now, right? It's become sort of a social movement and we've brought it over here to Sue with all of these sorts of challenges where people can take the stage on Sue in the way that they were through your previous Body Proud movement on a physical stage, people can literally do that on social media right here on Sue by taking challenges that you have set out to issue that other experts in the field or that just regular you know, content creators and users and people on this platform have said, hey, this has worked for me or hey, I wanna try this, I'm gonna issue this challenge. So social media has become the new stage for this Rethink Fit initiative, which is really, really exciting. And we'll dive back into the challenges in a bit. Um, and for anyone that's watching, that's wondering, how do I get involved? I wanna take a challenge. You know, I wanna be involved in this conversation. We'll definitely tell you all the ways that you can do that, where you can find them and how you can participate because this is a group movement. It is about a community experience. And it is so that we can all sort of support each other, watch each other, be inspired by each other, hold each other accountable, right? That's what this is for. This is also not just rethinking fit. There's rethinking so many different elements here, rethinking social media as a tool to rethink fit. So now I want to bring Lisa into this conversation a little bit to find out, Lisa, I mean, you do so many things. You wear many, many hats. Um, and it feels like you've had a lot of different aspirations and things that you've achieved both from sort of this athletic world to even events. Um, so I wanna start first with sort of the physical fitness component of it and your experience within the Body Proud movement. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, your experience and how it pertains to, to Body Proud and Rethink Fit in this way. Well, thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity. I have to tell you, it has been really transformational for me. And I feel like it's been a, a true blessing and good fortune that, um, that there were certain individuals that connected me to Jeff and to Mindy. And I, and I believe they would feel the same way that we've really formed something, you know, really quite special. And my background actually begins with me as a, as a student at UCLA in cancer research studies. And I had always had a passion for health and wellness. And I wanted from day one to be able to make a positive impact on people's lives and to help people better have a better experience while they're here in this human body here on earth. And how can we do that? Well, one way is, is health. I was also an elite athlete at the time competing for UCLA in the sport of diving and felt that that mind body balance was critical. After a number of years, marriage, kids, life, everything that goes on, you know, with that, it was actually through Jeff and Mindy that I rediscovered my passion for athletics and put myself back into balance. Didn't realize how much I needed that outlet and that focus and something that could be truly mine, where I wasn't defining myself by my job performance or my job as a mother or my role. I needed something that was truly for me. And I took a 30-day challenge. Jeff and Mindy issued on Body Proud a 30-day challenge, and there was a prize at the end. And at the time, it was do something really cool for yourself, whatever that is. You have 30 days, write your story, submit it, and you can win a pot of money. Let's just say that. I actually never truly ever submitted my story, but here it is now. So <laughs> I didn't win the money or the prize, but what I did win is an opportunity to regain my life and to rethink how uh, that balance works for me. So I entered a local diving competition, hadn't been on the diving boards or training at all with anyone in over 10 years. And this is a sport that requires a lot of consistent training. And um, I took my bumps and my bruises. I definitely walked into that pool deck for the, the championships. 
with bruises all around my legs. And I was, I was humbled by the fact that I could no longer do what I had wanted to, what I used to do, but I worked through that and I had to redefine my self-esteem at the same time, because this was a new reframing for me as well. But I ended up winning both boards, one meter and three meter. And I met, I re reconnected with my friends and my dive family and re found my passion. So I have stuck with it. Now I'm vice chair of master's diving. I'm also a dive coach in the evenings and I mentor adults and children for athletes in, in the evenings. And it's, a, and I'm still training and I'm, I'm shooting for the FINA world games in Fukuoka, Japan next year. Amazing. I'm going to brag for you too. She is also the current FINA master's world record holder on the one meter springboard. You've held that title undefeated since 2012. Um, and you are the reigning USA masters diving national champion for women's diving in your age group and for synchronized diving events. This is cool. Holy cow. <laughs> yes. Let's celebrate you, right? This is not just body proud, but like, holy cow, hashtag proud, proud, if you will. Um, you know, it, it's, it's incredible. And I, I really want to know too, when you re-entered this world, what were some of the things that you had to change? Like, did you have any limiting core beliefs or things that you had to sort of look at and sort of rethink in order to enter this? I really did because, well, no, I was no longer 20. That's one thing, right? And, you know, you want to do the same actions. You want to do it the same way that you remember. And you have to learn to just celebrate what you can do. Not every day is a perfect day. And there are days when Work is tough. I'm I, I'm not quite as sharp as I want to be, and I have a plan for workout, and it turns out differently, uh, and it's okay. And now we we have some mottos in Masters Diving where we say, hey, you know what? Today may not be a finesse day. It's a fitness day. So we're out on the boards, and it's just we're here for the fitness and the fact that we can because it's not going to be a perfect ten. That's for sure. There are there are certainly those days, and. Um, and the other limiting factors were just, you know, would I be able to continue to be able to, um, would I be able to continue to compete? Would I be able to train and have that consistency around a work schedule to be able to balance it? So mostly though, I would say it was around the, around the self-esteem of, of saying, look, you're, you know, you're in your forties and now I'm in my fifties. And I have realized though that on some days, some is better than none. Well, in my past, I'm a perfectionist. I mean, this is a perfectionist sport. I have now learned to let that go mm. and, and have that no longer be that pursuit, be the enemy of good and be the enemy. And that becomes what's great. So that's what's been the most satisfying release is that I can just be who I am, celebrate the joy of it and encourage others along the way. So part of this too has been a has been an opportunity for me to help other athletes, other adults, especially women who tend to put themselves second or third or fourth behind their families. And I want to re-inspire adult women, especially to say, you can still have goals and dreams. You can still get out there and play. And so I've issued cannonball challenges and other fun things where the, the point was to get out of your comfort zone and then to see how that translates in the rest of your life. Wow. Um, I so relate to the perfectionistic standards, uh, particularly within my exercise routine. Um, I still struggle with this so much and it's, it's a constant work in progress to sort of, you know, once I hit a goal, let's say, and I'll use, I'll use running right now as an example. So, right. Let's say that I, I've been slowly, by the way, working my way up just a little bit of backstory for anyone who's not familiar. Um, I've talked about this on the show before, but I, once the pandemic happened, I sort of had to pivot as a lot of us did to new workouts. Right. And so I started running every day, um, which is not really what you want to do if you're training for running. Um, you do want to allow yourself recovery time. And I was just like, boom, 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 six miles a day. That's what I was doing um, under no supervision, just under like, let's, it's an all or nothing approach. Either I'm going to do it or I'm not going to do it at all. And I injured myself and I had to basically work with a physical therapist for the last, I guess, six to eight months at this point to get back up to it from a place where I couldn't walk without pain. 
Um, I could walk, but it hurt tremendously. So I was definitely not running at all and move really slowly into a process where eventually after doing a lot of sort of core and glute and hip strengthening exercises was then, you know, sort of running for one minute and walking for a minute and then increasing gradually and gradually. And now I am back up to a place where I can run, which is amazing. Um, but it's taken a lot of slow, slow work and patience. And I am still finding now when I go to the gym, now that I have, it's funny because that first run where I was finally given permission to do even just one minute and walk one minute, I was so grateful, right? I was like, oh, this is the best. I'm going to remember this forever. I'm allowed. I'm never going to take this for granted. And as soon as I started to work myself back up, and as soon as I got that permission to then be like, okay, now you can run as long as you can run, I... I started to hit goals again, right? So I would get, you know, that 20 minutes, right? Then I would get that 30 minutes. And then I found myself getting very rigid in my brain where I'd be like, well, you, if you're going to run now, you can't go for let, like no going for less than 30 minutes. If you go for less than 30 minutes, it's unsuccessful. Um, and you might as well just go home, right? And I'm, this is what I'm doing to myself. And so I've had to literally have a conversation with myself where it's like, okay, that's not what this is about, right? What, what is your intention? And this leads me to the next thing that I want to ask you, like, what is my intention behind going for this run? Sometimes it can be the goal, right? If I'm feeling great that day, maybe it is. I'd love to set a new goal for myself. Maybe I go for 31 minutes. Okay. Or maybe it's, I want to break a new time in a shorter amount of time or and those are sort of like athletic goals. But what if my intention for the day is just to keep moving, no matter what the speed is, right? And to then, if, if I'm feeling like I'm cramping up or my legs are bothering me or whatever it is, you know, then I can just slow that speed down and just keep moving. Or maybe it's just to connect to my body and get out of the crazy thoughts going through my head. Um, you know, whatever the, the intention might be. So it's a constant evolution and also just like giving myself permission for it not to have to look the same way every single time, right? This idea of like success in the workout, which whatever that is that I've made up for myself, which no one else has told me that this is the case, you know, only I have invented this in my head and it's been a real struggle. So when you're, when you were beginning diving again, right. And training for this, how did you go about doing that? Like what were some of the actions that you took to reset intentions, let's say, or to give yourself permission to not have to uphold a certain standard? So that's a great question. And I love your shared story. I think so many people can relate to that. And, and even with working with, you know, some of my other adult uh, masters, athlete teammates and whatnot, who most of them have been in sports and were competitive athletes and might've been at the elite level uh, may not have been. Some are just very bravely getting out there for the very first time, which I, I really give them kudos, you know, to to facing those challenges. But honestly, there are many times that we have to reset. And we have to say, you know what? We just need to find the fun. Find your fun. Find your joy. And there, I, I will share an example. We were at a, a championship meet where my teammates and I all were seeming a little bit stressed. We were at a national championship. We really wanted to do our best. We've really been training hard. And you know, you've got one shot at this dive that you've done a zillion times. And this one has to be good. You know what? That's a lot of pressure to put on yourself. And it was actually starting to all get to us. And, and I as kind of jumped in as team captain. I said, you know what we need to do, girls? We need to stop and find an every dive at least one short we moment and we call it find your we moment where we just say you know what that was downright fun and then I'll remind myself sometimes too to say you know what I just put myself on the best roller coaster ever I can't pay enough money to Disneyland to put me on a coaster quite like I just did I'm like this is so fun find your inner 13 year old and bring it out but in doing that there are a number of steps and I've gone through challenges with, with injury and whatnot too. And then you have to reset and come back and reset and come back and work your way through. So it's just focusing on the foundational things and showing up, right? They say, you know, so much of the, the process and anything in life is just show up. So we'll get there and do what you can, because again, some is better than none. 
instead of just putting that, you know, um, you know, just to, to keep that flat. But working on the fitness in the background, physical fitness, the food that I eat, my mindset, refocusing so that I can breathe and I can be there. I chose diving because I have to be present. Mm. And if that's part of my goal for that day is to say, get me out of thinking about work, get me out of thinking about whatever life stresses there may be. If I'm not fully present when I'm on that diving board, I'm dead. <laughs> like you have to be focused. But when I was swimming, running, biking, doing any of those other things, all those other thoughts could come in and could creep in and sabotage my workout. So I look for the opportunity now to playfully do the actions. It was a job when I was in school. It paid for school. Now it's a joy. And that's different. And I think we're trying to mentor you know, even the younger athletes to say, you can find this sport for life. And that's what, that's what I'm hoping that I can model. So I just remind myself that, of that every single day. Oh my God. There are so many good points in there. I, I think find the fun is essential. Removing expectations again, from what your workout needs to look like and just getting there. Like half the battle truly is, you know, I'm like, Oh, I don't feel like doing it today. And so many of us have had that conversation. Okay. We'll have the smart feet get there. And then if you run for five minutes or you do whatever form of workout you wanted for five minutes and you still don't want to be there. Okay. You tried go home. And I never want to stop. Once I've started, I will say I actually never want to stop. Or at least a lot of times if I can say, let's say I do cramp or something's happening. I'm like, all right, why don't we walk for a little bit? Again, it's just kind of like, let's keep moving. Like what, what else can I do here? Um, and the, the thing is too, one of the ways that I've been finding my fun in something as simple as a run and staying present. And this is a hot tip for anyone. I don't know if that wants it. And this comes from my producer right off camera right now. I, I did your workout the other day. I don't want to look at you, <laughs> but I went to, I went to the, the gym. I got on the treadmill and I did interval training because I was so bored of running at my constant pace. And it, I don't know. I just was like, let me try something new. So I jumped up that speed and whoo, if that wasn't a wee moment, I don't know what it was. I was so scared I was going to fall off the treadmill. So I advise everyone to just be careful if you're doing that. But like, there ain't no, nothing like grounding you in a treadmill that is racing. You cannot think of anything else, but not falling off of that treadmill. So I was just doing like quick, you know, high speeds. And then I would just like stop for a moment um, or walk for a moment. I actually was too scared to just step on the sides because I, did not know how to do that. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. <laughs> so I just was like, crank the speed back down manually. And then I would just like walk for a little bit and then I would run again. And it was so exciting because I was like, oh, there's no rules to this. I'm making this up as I go along. And then I would go back to my medium speed and then I would go to my, and it was fun again. And I was like, okay, there are ways to do a very traditional form of exercise and make it fun again. So I love that. Um, I also imagine it's fun with diving as sort of this communal sport. When you originally said a we moment, I thought you meant like as a team. So I wanna actually show everyone that's watching. I'm sure everyone's like, wait, this woman can die. I want you to see what her dives look like. So we do have a couple of clips. We're gonna start with a synchronized diving clip to show the we and the we that goes into <laughs> this diving it's a sport. It's social sport. We're very supportive because you're constantly fighting fear. Or, or managing it, you're managing it. And that's part of the joy and the adrenaline rush, but it's very much a social sport uh, working with your teammates. So let's take a look at the synchronized diving video and see how cool it is what Lisa can do. Okay. And just because I know y'all want to see something similar like that in a slow-mo setting, it's not quite the same dive, but we do have sort of that similar kind of dive in a slow-mo video. Let's take a look at the slow-mo version of a dive. Tired 
someone else to like find their own passion again, which is really cool. I mean, that's really what this is all about, right? Again, it comes back to sort of the idea of that by sharing these journeys, these gains, these transformations, all of these experiences on social media, it becomes something that we can actually use as a tool to inspire others. Um, I have one more video and I love this one because you talked about sort of, sort of the fear behind it, right? So I wanna, before we get to the video, I wanna talk a little bit about that. Like, I can't imagine how much <laughs> fear you must feel in training for some of these, like literally you could die, like you said. So what are some of the tools that you use when doing something that actually could cost you your life? Like, how do you approach a new move like that? And how do you get yourself in the mindset to be able to even attempt something that's like putting your life at risk? That's a, that's a great question. And, and as a coach, I, I handle this with the kids all the time. We work up little steps. So all of the little steps might've been first you do the back somersault, then you start to add the, the half twist. Then you learn how to add another, another one and a half twist. And you do it to your feet, to your feet, to your feet. You do parts of the action and you train on the various levels until, and those are called preps. So you do all your lead ups. So you're doing all these little actions that you, that remind you that you have the skill set within you. And you have, you start to build the motor muscle memory. Also, I have an understanding of the kinesthetic awareness because there's other things. Like you don't just jump up there for the very first time and just chuck that stuff. There has to be a methodical approach so that you can build confidence. Then there is that, you know, hey, you just got to get it done. You just got to go for the leap of faith. So instead of saying, oh my goodness, because you could stand up there and I used to do this as a kid. Oh my goodness, I am going to die okay, wait a minute, let's reset this. You're not going to die. Um, and if you focus on what needs to happen, not all the zillion things of what could happen, but what needs to happen, the critical things, maybe two or three max that will make it work, you'll be fine. And you have to have the faith in that. So for example, with this one that we'll see, I hadn't done this in about six months, I'm very scared of it because there have been times that I had been lost in the twist and it was very wobbly and that is frightening very frightening to be falling at that speed and, and, and to be very concerned. So I had to rebuild up, do all the preps, finally take that up and say, hey, just start it the same way, just start and the rest should happen. And it, so, but that was a personal challenge. I don't have to do that dive. I don't have to do anything. Um, it's not my job anymore. These are all challenges that, that I put out for myself because I, I want to know that I still can't. I'm one of the few women in the world that is doing these things. And I think that's cool. And even if I'm just the oldest person in the world that's doing these things, that's cool. So, you know, kind of without expectation. That is very cool. Um, I mean, it's amazing. So I could never dream of doing this. Uh, I mean, I guess I could, right? Like, let's open our, let's open our minds to the possibility. I guess I could right? If I wanted to, and we'll talk about passion projects in a little bit. If I wanted to make this my passion project, I could. Um, but let's show you exactly this move, this sort of somersault thing that Lisa is doing that right now I can't quite wrap my brain around how I would actually do it. <laughs> All right, everyone, we're back with Lisa Meller, Jeffrey Kippel, Mindy Blackstein. You've been watching Lisa's journey right here on Sue TV on the social universe, back into the diving that she did, you know, back in her college days. And she's now in her 50s. And this is all a part of the Rethink Fitness, Rethink Fit initiative uh, that Jeffrey and Mindy have started that is also, you know, alive and well right here on Sue. In just a moment, we're going to talk to you about how you can get involved and also about how this goes so much beyond this physical athletic sort of stuff that we've been talking about. But Jeff and Mindy, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to, do you have any additional thoughts? It's interesting what the things that Lisa has been talking about as they pertain to her training for the diving stuff. I find myself saying, 
these would be applicable for other things as well. Um, talk to me about some of the, you know, the actions that she's taking and the feelings that she's having that resonate maybe with you and the Rethink Fit initiative or your, even your own personal experience. I'll, I'll start. One of the things that Lisa, that you said that really stood out is uh, getting into that focused state. So when you're saying, uh, you know, when you're training and you're doing things, you have to get completely into, into focus so you're not having all those other thoughts. Well, that's something that anyone could do. I mean, anyone could get into that state, whether you're running, you're lifting weights, dancing, whatever you're doing. It's to get into that, that state where that's your primary focus. And then you're in flow, right? When you're saying, you know, those actions, you need to know to start because you're in flow because you've done it and you're focused on what you're doing. And it just, it just happens. So I really like that. And it's, it's not something that only extreme athletes need to do. It's anyone could do it at any, at any point. Uh, so I really liked uh, that point. Um, to add to that, it's anyone could take the action, but it starts with kind of becoming aware of what excites you, what you're curious to get back into or to what, where you were passionate previously. So like things that Lisa said, there's skill sharpening in there, there's talent tune up, there's passion project, just leveling up yourself. And these are all different types of challenges that people could take for themselves to discover new joy in their life. Even like job to joy, like Lisa said, there's so many golden yeah. nuggets that came out of her story that really represent what the initiative is all about. Even, even her story inspiring others to follow her lead. That's exactly like what the initiative and through Sue is supposed to help um, create. I can see why you invited her to be a guest on this show. <laughs> Just so happens to tie in perfectly to the message that we're trying to bring our viewers, of course. <laughs> um, so for everyone that is watching, we're going to be talking a bit more about sort of the passion project and Lisa's you know, journey with the Rethink Fit initiative beyond this sort of diving journey that she's taking. Um, and also where Rethink Fit is heading, because we've got some pretty exciting news. And as well as, as you guys getting involved in all of the challenges that we've been mentioning and a couple of the ones that Mindy just shouted out on the show. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, all of that. You are watching The Social Universe here on Sue TV. I'm your host, Sarah Previs, and I've been sitting down with Lisa Meller, Jeffrey Kippel, and Mindy Blackstein, and we've been talking all things Rethink Fit. So we were just talking about sort of where the Rethink Fit initiative came from, how it applies to Lisa's own journey within the diving community and getting back into competitive diving. But if that's not enough of a passion project, we're about to talk more about her experience beyond sort of this athletic one. And again, how Rethink Fit goes well beyond sort of this external thing that so many of us traditionally associate with the word fitness. So hashtag passion project. This is something that we've been talking about within this segment. Uh, and for anyone here on Sue right now, you can also get involved in. This is something that we really invite you to take part in. If there's something that you've been thinking about, you know, getting back into something that excites you, maybe that you never pursued in the first place, this is your opportunity to get inspired by others who are doing passion projects. And, take, and to take the initiative to do it, take that action and share your journey right here on Sue. Um, now, I wanna talk a little bit about how Lisa is doing that once again, outside of the diving community. So you mentioned sort of going to school for cancer research, right? And then you have the diving stuff that you're doing, but we also have this passion for travel and event planning and coordinating. Um, so talk to me a little bit about your background here. Certainly. So one of the things I realized early on when I was, a, I was an immunologist, I was doing cancer research and I would get out in the middle of the day, I'd set up my experiments and I wanted to get out and, and just, just do something athletic, just, just live life. And actually, strangely, I hooked up with the university of Houston and was diving during my breaks, trying to get back in after college. And I was, I got busted by my bosses and they basically said, nobody does that. People work in the lab 14 hours a day, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, you know what? They don't know how to live. That's what my <laughs> was. Actually, 
I realized that people were living in a little ice bucket. Nobody was sharing, nobody was collaborating and everybody was competing for grant funds. It was not a healthy place to be. And I felt, I felt really stifled. So that was a huge shift, huge shift. Cause I had to walk away from that. My mom had always been in travel. I had always traveled with meat. I'd always been out there and it was always working for a goal, earning the opportunity, right? To attend the national championships or some, you know, cool event. And I got into meetings and incentives in a roundabout way. And incentives are truly my passion because people are being rewarded for positive behavior and their own transformational change. And then there's a positive reinforcement. They get to go on this really cool trip and explore the world and have these amazing experiences that connected people that were fun. And then of course we'd see brand loyalty, the corporate client was happy. Everything you know, was really working together. Uh, for that. And so my meetings and incentives experience, I realized when we bring people together, we change the world. We really do. We need to collaborate. We're social animals. So I've been in events now for 20 years and have run my own business, have been the director of a, of a large scale $600 million travel agencies uh, events department. And I now own my own business again, after several years of walking away so that I could do it my way without somebody else telling me how I had to do it. The cool thing about this is that Jeff and Minnie have been with me through that journey and have we have done some events, we've done some things together and we've been building for what we are now super excited to launch uh, together. So my company, which handles all full scale meetings, events, conferences, expositions, corporate retreats around the globe has officially partnered with one of my travel agency owner partners with whom I've worked since 2005 we decided to form the Rethink Fit Travel brand, specifically dedicated to supporting this initiative, this focus, and to focus on wellness tourism, serving those people that want to get out, want to be inspired, want to make change, want positive transformation. Let's help them find the outdoor activities or the, the, the mindfulness retreats or the destinations that inspire them. And then let's host the events. Let's host and run these retreats. And let me help those who also want to host their own events, meetings, retreats, buy out a cruise, whatever they want to do with, with their like-minded group. Let us help you make that happen because that's our professional expertise that we bring to the table. So not only are we passionate about wellness, but now we can help people bring their tribe together and do this in a structured way. So we just launched the brand. We're launching this at the same time with Jeff and Mindy. And we're super, <laughs> yeah, we're super excited about the opportunity because we'll be able to offer both leisure travel experiences for the individuals and for small groups or families, as well as the larger scale group events, even for the corporate and association clients within the, the, the wellness industry. So it's pretty exciting. I feel like we have something really full service. And as Jeff, Mindy, and I have talked we believe wellness is for everybody. It used to be that it was only really kind of for the affluent. People would go off to these wellness retreats and you had to spend, you know, thousands of zillions of dollars to do it. Well, you know, every single human being will find wellness in their own way. And it, we believe that this is one of the ways that we can help them with that reach. So making it available. So we'll be doing, uh, we're pulling together a calendar of events that we plan to host around the globe, theme-based events looking for those speakers, those hosts, those, you know, the content providers so that they become the backbone and they become the feature and the focus for each of those events. We can collaborate and we can also help them help people wherever they are to plan their own events, whether it's local or they say, oh my gosh, I really want to take my North American group to, uh, to Lake Cuomo, you know, overseas, right? Or let's go to Spain or let's go to Bali and have a spiritual journey great, let's plan it, let's do it. And we have the expertise to bring it together. So that's really our passion project right now is, is launching this wellness opportunity, this wellness focus for travel. I think that's super exciting. So big congratulations to everyone on this right now. Um, and I love the idea of also just rethinking travel here because I think sometimes, you know, you think travel has to be expensive or travel, you have to eat a bunch of food and then just lay it out on the beach. Like what would it look like to rethink travel to include a wellness experience, both in terms of sort of the yoga element, or like you said, sort of a spiritual element or just people getting together and dancing, 
motivational type stuff. There's so many options for this idea of rethinking travel. I see, do you, is that, no, did I, I bring a actually, light bulb? Yeah, light bulb with that, with rethinking travel, we actually reframed FIT. So FIT, FIT is generally means foreign, and, foreign independent travel. And it's for the individual person to customize their own experience. Well, FIT also has to do with fitness. We've gone a step further and we call it focused intentional travel because that's what wellness is really all about. Focused, intentional travel. I love that. Okay. So let's give the reveal right here. First time the launch event of this will be June 12th. Where is this? What can people expect? So we are hosting this as a virtual summit, especially because we have followers and friends all around the globe. And we're not able to all get together at this time. It's just the logistics with COVID and the pandemic is just too great. So we wanted to be able to launch this as a virtual summit. And we're taking Global Wellness Day as our way of celebrating the, the opportunity that we all have here. And we're going to do a three-hour live webinar on June 12th. And we're going to run concurrent sessions based on what other speakers, practitioners, subject matter experts are able to share among the Rethink Fit community. So they are invited to have an opportunity to be showcased within our platform, our event platform, for attendees to access from wherever they are and whatever time zone they are, content that helps them with their own particular journey. So whether they're on a mindfulness journey or a fit advance, or they were looking for nutrition, detox, or they just need a new art project. I mean, I learned candle making was my passion project last year. How crazy is that? And, and these are the types of things, though, that help us to reconnect with who we are. So we're excited. We're now right in that stage where we're starting to really look to curate some of the speakers and the content that will help to flow that. And we should be launching registration May 1st. That is so exciting. So for anyone that's looking to find out more information on any of this or even any of the challenges, let's say you wanted to take the passion project challenge or create your own challenge within the Rethink Fit initiative, or maybe you're someone who, you know, you do feel like you're an expert in this field and you do have something to offer, let's say at one of these retreats, um, definitely check out Jeff and Mindy's Rethink Fit initiative. It's rethinkfit.social. Do you have a website that you want to refer to as well, Lisa, or is that we where they can find things? It's, it's, you know, bear with us. It's a little under construction right now. We've got rethinkfittravel.com and you'll see that the, uh, the branding, the brand identity is very similar. Uh, so we're building that out, but also challenge for everyone is to get out there and rediscover the world in your own way. Share with us where you like to go and where you find your wellness and tap and do hashtag rethink fit travel to share your joy in your journey. Hashtag rethink fit travel. We've all had to reimagine what travel looks like for this year. Um, and definitely moving forward as well. You know, what could it look like for you, right? Approach it from a posture of curiosity and really ask yourself the questions. What do you want to get out of travel and also expand your definition of travel and take our challenge, make a video, create a post, post it right here on Sue. Make sure you tag at rethink fit. And that way we can feature you even on this show potentially. So thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Mindy. This has been an amazing segment hearing about all of your journeys and of course, big, big announcements. So thank you so much for being here and for everyone else watching, we will be right back in just a moment with our Women's History Month panel. Stay tuned for that.